Wait, you'd never know you were in the one. Hello, I'm Kyle Brooks. And I'm Ian Cochran. And we are here to tell you about the historical significance of black ash in an Aboriginal community. Thank you. E. So when you're trying to find a, the proper black ash for a basket, uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure the tree that you're looking at is a black ash. So a black ash are opposite arrangement with a multi-leaf stem, so there's multiple leaves on one stem. The younger black ash have more of these forky ridges here, and uh, the older ones are more smoother. So when you're looking for a good black ash specimen for your basket, this one is an example of one that is not, because you have very low branching and it's multi-stemmed, so you're looking at something that's not very straight at all, and it just wouldn't work very well for what we're looking for. And the diameter isn't big enough. You want something that's quite a bit more substantial. This one back here is a much better specimen because it's nice, it's straight, it's nice and rounded, so you're getting good growth on you're getting good growth rings on it, on all the sides because you want to be splitting on the growth rings, like Ian will explain later, to make the basket. So this one would be a good one. And then we're going to head inside and Ian will explain to you the actual process of it. Use. One of the major ones that they use it for, the black ash for, is to make baskets. Now, for in terms of wood characteristics for the black ash or Fraximus nigra, it has a very quick growing and much larger earlier wood when compared to the late one, which is slower and much stronger. But one of the issues is, is that there is there is not too much strength in the, what is it, the annual growth ring, and that is the area where separation occurs. So how do they make baskets? That's what I've displayed to you over here. But how? Harvesting, as Kyle already talked about outside, um, is where you select the best tree you possibly can find in the environment. Um, as Kyle already discussed, there's a lot of different parameters you can look for. And the second stage is you debark. So I have your bark all taken off here, and it's cut down to eight to ten foot length. All of ours removed, and then it goes into a soaking process. So you can see the log here being submerged underwater for a certain period of time. That um, expands the early wood, and also gives space and breaks down the uh, annual growth ring. Then, after it's done being soaked it's put into what we call hammer time. So it's stood up on itself like this, and then it's hammered down from the top and hammered down from the bottom to continue to separate. And then you can strip it using a knife. So it can be cut into strips and pulled apart. And then after that, all that's left to do after your strips have dried is weave it together into a nice creative basket. That is how you make a basket out of black ash.